so often, too openly with governors. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, number one, is it absolutely essential I do it, or can somebody else do it equally as well? That's number one. All right. Now, before I do it, shouldn't I check with uh, Russell Long and Senator Ellender and get a local feel of it? Hale Boggs, uh, uh, a little bit uh, where I can feel it a little better before I talk to the governor. Uh, what uh, are we going to do if the governor says no? I would guess he would say no. He's not going to try to enforce our Supreme Court decision, is he? Well, except that uh, he's got the, the problem of being the only uh, governor. We, uh, What I have compiled is a whole uh, list of uh, states in which every other governor has been willing to take the law and order position without regard to whether they approved of uh, an order. The last time that federal troops have had to been used is in Oxford, Mississippi. Since that time, Clemson has been uh, desegregated. Uh, Macon County, uh, Alabama, which is just as tough a county as uh, St. Helena Parish, and uh, Governor uh, Bryant was willing to do that in St. Augustine. Governor uh, Wallace brought in uh, National Guard troops. Uh, Jimmy Davis desegregated Baton Rouge without any federal uh, troops being there, and I think we got a pretty good uh, case. I don't suppose he wants federal troops any more than you do, and uh, we've got I think uh, some pretty good arguments. I'm gonna, I've got them in, a, in the process of being put together in a memorandum form. Would it be best to have John Connolly condition his for it a little bit, very close friend, before I talk to him? It might, but uh, I think, Mr. President, if you take a look at the memo and see the points, then maybe it'd uh, be worth uh, either you or someone you want talking to John Connolly and getting his reaction to how this would, uh, would strike McKeithen. I'll have that uh, in a matter of uh, an hour, an hour and a half. All right, now... Uh, and uh, the problem, though... Uh, I suppose he doesn't agree to it. What's our alternative? When is this taking place? Uh, originally, we thought that it was going to uh, take place next Wednesday. But it turns out that Wednesday is simply a day for registration and that school does not actually begin until Monday, the 17th of August. What are they doing beginning school in August? Well, apparently uh, it relates to a uh, strawberry picking uh, recess they have there in that particular county. And uh, they start awfully early so the kids can get out uh, strawberry time and do some picking. But uh, nobody had ever heard of this before, including the uh, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which issued a mandamus to set get everything all ready by the start of the fall term. They didn't realize the fall term was right on them when they said this. Well, now, but we do have they, a little more breathing time than we thought because... Uh, the alternatives, uh, what happens? Is, is, does the school superintendent refuse to admit the child? It looks like they're going to uh, agree. Uh, everything took a remarkable turn last night when the, the district judge uh, issued an order uh, adopting the, the Baton Rouge plan, which means that the 11th and 12th grades of the high school will actually be desegregated on a... Uh, a basis where the pupils will report to the to the Negro schools to which they're assigned. They then apply for a transfer to the white school, and the school board acts on it. Uh, we believe that the NAACP will make sure that the there is a, uh, some control over the, the number of students who apply and will involve only two uh, high schools. Uh, the board will act on, by next Saturday and on Monday, those who have been selected will report to uh, their white schools. At that point is where uh, the, the danger uh, rests in some sort of a explosive situation. But it does give us... Uh, All right, now, if, uh, if uh, they don't let the kids go to school, then the governor has to go and march in in? Well, if they don't let them go in, then I think uh, it's a question of... Uh, uh, a marshal accompanying him, and our present recommendation is that United States marshals be there only to withdraw the children in the event that there is difficulty. If there is difficulty, they would be expected to uh, protect them and pull them back so they don't get hurt. And uh, at that point, uh, I think uh, the court will have to decide whether there has been a, an unwillingness to uh, comply with its order. And at that point, if the governor does not step in, I would guess that federal troops would be necessary to to escort the children to the school and to protect them from any uh, violence. 
Any other alternative besides the governor? What about Marshall's gun? Well, uh, right now, the, you know, there's no evidence that uh, there will not uh, be compliance with it. In fact, one of the pieces of information is that the, the council for the school district uh, has acquiesced and agreed to the court's order that was issued last night. So at least uh, we don't start off with, uh, with them why being against they want us. Me, why is the Attorney General calling me from New York where he's speaking asking me to call the governor? Uh, I think uh, simply because he wants to give the uh, belief that the governor ought to have enough time to uh, make a decision and to prepare for uh, the use of uh, an adequate number of state police to move into the uh, area to be handy. If they don't comply. If they don't comply, that's correct. They have indication they're going to comply. That's right, and uh, another I point. I ought to talk to the senators about it before I talk to the governor? Uh, it seems to me to be uh, quite useful, and uh, when you see these points run down, I think you can make a very compelling case to them. Up to now, they've been pressing us, saying, you know, don't close things up so we have to desegregate. I think now that the court has taken the initiative, their pressure ought to be on uh, the governor and the local law enforcement people saying, now, the court has spoken, there's nothing we can do about it except comply. And if you all want to keep the federal troops out of there, you better make sure that your governor and uh, the local sheriff understands that... Who uh, is the congressman in this area? Uh, Jimmy Morrison. Uh, he doesn't get any votes out of the parish. It's a very small uh, area. But he's scared to death that, you know, if it isn't handled right, it's going to explode uh, in the rest of the district. Well, and we'll it's a tough area. Well, I'd say it wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, you get that stuff as soon as you can, and I'll come back to lunch and we'll get on it this afternoon. All right, I will, Mr. President.